Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Crime Pays But Badly Doesn't. Okay? It's a nice logging truck that went by for a lag, you know, for the lags. You know, they take the lags out. I hope you're having a nice time. I hope you're having a real nice time. In Chicago, that's akin to telling somebody to go fuck themselves. Okay, to fuck right off. But, uh, you know, we, it, nice kind of means tolerable disdain in Chicago. Isn't it nice? Okay? But uh, that's not the way I'm referring to nice right here. Okay? This is this is genuine nice. This, as you can see, is the Upper Bernie Creek, Baker Cypress Grove, Research Natural Area, Area of Critical Environmental Concern. What the fuck does that mean? You might be asking yourself. Areas of critical environmental concern, uh, as I understand it, were a movement by biologists and uh, conservationists and ecologists and botanists, as well as wildlife biologists, in the uh, 70s and 80s. They were a, kind of a last-ditch effort to preserve uh, areas that had interesting, rare, or notable species in them from uh, any economic interests that might otherwise destroy said areas. You know, just kind of wipe them off the map and, you know, because they're just in the way. Uh, they don't really use areas of critical environmental concern so much. But if you're looking on a map of California, of natural areas, you'll see those words. Areas of critical environmental concern, research, natural area, etc. Anyway, what we're doing here is you can see we got a rare plant, Baker cypress. Used to be in the genus Capressus, which is now an old world genus on the east side of the Atlantic. Mostly in Europe and uh, in Asia. Uh it was thought that, you know, Baker cypress, that the species in North America and uh, in uh, uh, the old, quote, old world were more closely related than they actually were. They're not actually in the same genus. There's, when they looked at the DNA, they realized they were a lot different. Also, cotyledon number, uh, the cotyledons look vastly different between the two genera. So Baker cypress is in, now in Hesperocypress along with Arizona cypress, etc., but we, you know, we, we can forgive it. You know, it's old takes. Not everyone's up to date on the taxonomy. It can be kind of a clusterfuck, especially in this day of molecular phylogenies, of looking at DNAs, DNA sequences to elucidate evolutionary relationships. Anyway, this plant, Baker cypress, is one of my favorites. It's uh, one of the plants that first got me into botany about 14 years ago. Uh, it's a very rare plant, as you can see, as it says right there. It's only known from 11 or 12 places in the world. Okay. One of them... Uh, being right here. Now, right here, this is actually, you know, it looks like a forest, but it's basically a massive logging plantation. Uh, you know, they replant, they, they cut trees, they replant them. Uh, you know, it's not as bad as it sounds. I mean, it's bad. Don't get me wrong. I don't know what they do with the wood because the wood they take out is not high quality lumber. I mean, it's, it's lumber that would make the cheap shit you buy at home despot look like uh, old growth dug fur. They probably pulp it. I don't know what they do, but it's some sort of industry. I don't know. Who knows? Who gives a fuck? Anyway, uh, so what they had to do here, I think this is all mostly replanted. I think some of the trees were old and they had to replant it. The power company has an easement through there. I believe some of the trees on the power company were replanted by the power company. Uh, you know, normally when you see cypresses, they're growing on very odd substrates because that's the only place that they don't have any competition from other plants. Why is competition from other plants, from other trees, important? Because cypresses are completely shade intolerant and tend to die out, as you'll see, uh, if they get shaded out by other trees such as white firs, which can be very, very weedy. Abies con color, this guy, very, very weedy tree. Uh, and they grow fast, too, so they end up shading out the cypresses. The cypress cones, of course, only, at least this species, as well as many others in California, only open with fire. So anyway, I'll stop talking. I'll stop yammering. Uh, for now, let's get in and see what's going on inside the fort. Okay, so you could see fire suppression has been going on here for a long time. I mean, I look at this and I just see, I want to light it on fire. <laughs> it looks like it needs to burn. Of course, now would be the time to do it if you were, I mean, I'm not saying I'm going to, but you, you know, you need, you would need a controlled burn. You need a team of experts, but now would be the time to do it because of how wet it is. Actually, it might be too wet, but, uh, Either way, here's a downed cypress tree, and you can see the there's the cones right there. Now, this probably, they don't live too long to begin with. Cypresses do not live too long, 200 years max. Okay, this one probably lived about that long. There's another one back there. You can see uh, it's basically all the trees on the bottom are dead, and they're playing host to that really cool lichen species. Okay, 
all the, all the branches on the bottom are dead and they're playing a host that are really cool like species. But up there, you can see the leaves where they're in a the full sun still are uh, vivacious, bright and green, vivid green. And they got a, looks like a microstrobili, the pollen cones, analogous to male flowers, but they're not because they're conifers, remember? So they're, they're gymnosperms. But they're microstrobili, which is basically a conifer dong, okay? There's the uh, wolf lichen on there, that daglo lichen. You got other species too, you need a lichenologist. My friend Alejandro down there in the Wave of Leones, a, a lichenologist. Maybe we got to get him up here. If I'm uh, look at some of this stuff, lichens are fucking incredible. But uh, anyway, okay, let's keep going. Let's uh, let's go through this uh, little snag right here. Oh. This is interesting here. Okay, look, there's another cypress that fell down. You could tell when these germinated, this was open. Okay, it's since grown up because cypresses would they would never survive in this type of habitat if it was this shady. So my guess is, uh, you know, due to fire suppression, the white firs have grown up, shaded out the cypresses, and now they're dying. Down by the power line isn't where we're going. It's a little bit more open, you'll see. Look at this stuff on the ground, though. Looks like uh, the kind of mold you see on dog shit. Okay? That's weird. Need someone to come in here who studies fungus and uh, see what's going on. But they're basically decomposing the white fur. It could be a slime mold, too. I don't know. My friend Damon does that stuff. I don't do that stuff. I don't do that. It's eating everything, though. Just secreting the enzymes and decaying all the organic material on the ground. You can see the base rock here is that nice andesite. Volcanic rock. Probably blasted out of Mount Lassen or a nearby cinder cone within the last, I don't know, 50 to 100,000 years. Maybe a lot more recent. But 50,000 years is actually pretty recent in the span of things. Okay, keep moving on. Here we go. Cause we are living in the futures, I tell you it's how I know, cause I read it in the paper 15 years ago. World driving rocket ships and talking with our minds, wearing turquoise jewelry and standing in soup lines. Look, see there's the bark. This tree's still alive, but not for long. You can still see it's got green up top. But uh, the white firs are really bad. Here's an old cypress, which looks, this might even still be, no, I don't think this is a life still. See, the shade is really bad for them. You'll see them growing on serpentine, this species, Bakeri, named after a guy named Milo Baker. Again, I really wish they wouldn't do that, but what are you going to do? That's what they do. They like to name the plants after people, after finite human lives. God, look at that. I'm going to break my ass going through here. So Hesperocyperus bakeri only grows on a serpentine or volcanic rock. But, uh, you know, they also do well in Chicago, too. I grew a couple from seed, planted them at my ma's. She lives in Crook County, and they're doing good. It's like 15 feet tall now, because they can take those brutal winters. I gave some to Morton Arboretum in Lyle, too, but they planted them at the wrong time of year out in an open field. And they just got blasted by the wind before they had time to get established, and then they all died. Look at this. Look, this, so this is, this is cypress torture. Look at it. It's the barely getting enough. You know, if, I'll tell you what I'd do if I was in charge here. I'd come in here with a chainsaw, and I would just saw down all the white firs, their weedy trees, give the cypresses some sun. Look at that beautiful bark, though. And these guys, you know what? I was wrong too. There's one at Morton Arboretum in Lyle. Lyle's in DuPage County. You don't want to go to the DuPage County. That's on a, that's, it's west of Chicago. You're getting too far from the city center. Okay. In DuPage, you are going to run into bad elements over there. Okay. Suburban lifestyle. Okay. You don't want to be around this stuff. Okay. It's sad. It's depressing. It'll get you into trouble. Okay. It's a trap. Anyway, you go, they, there's one, one tree is still alive at Morton Arboretum in Lyle. It survived. Go check it out if you live out there. Anyway, so there's that bark. But you could see they're just, they're falling over. They're not happy. Look at all the lichen. Look at all the lichens up there. So I'd come down here. I'd saw all this white fur down. Look at this guy. He's barely, he's barely getting enough sun. Other thing about this tree is it smells incredible. Each one, look at it. Each one of those tiny white resin glands is just filled with the most pungent and volatile uh, terpenes 
It just smells like crazy. It smells like some sort of racy cologne, you know? It really does. Look at those little cones. Those are the cones right there. Those little, little gray blobs, warty blobs. And they only open if they get uh, enough heat from a fire. And there's, of course, microstroboli. So microstroboli up there, and they're all yellow because they're releasing pollen right now. Be nice to look at it under a microscope. And megastroboli, a.k.a. the cones, the female cones. So as we continue up slope, we're getting away from the shady understory of what a goddamn white fur Oh, Jesus Christ, look at all the manzanita, too, all the Arctostaphylos patula, and Ceanothus volutinus. See, there's a Ceanothus. Talk about volatiles. You got so many volatiles coming out of this guy, out of those stomata. The, the damn leaves smell. When they flower, they smell incredible, too. They kind of smell like semen, even from like Tempe. It's kind of, you know, disturbing. But, uh, you know, it feels like you're in a movie theater on 42nd Street in the late 70s when they're flowering, okay? But, uh... But the volatiles coming out of the stomata uh, are, in, you know, just from the leaf, the, from the vasculature of the leaf, are pleasant. You could smell those from 10 feet away, too. Look at this shit. Look, this, again, need a fire. So anyway, as we go further up slope and it gets a little brighter, a little more sun, we're going to see more cypresses. And you can see there's just a forest, almost of pure cypress there. See, now we're getting up here. Now we're getting up in the sun. And you can see... These guys are just, that's loot right there. They're just blowing loads all over the place. You see that? Those are all the microstroboli releasing the pollen. You got a saw the white fur on. Okay, thicker in the cypress forest now. Look at this. So this is a, this is a species of Ceanothus. Remember, I just showed you Ceanothus volutinus. This is a similar species, but it grows prostrate on the ground in a mat. How's that for variations on a the theme? Ramnaceae, the buckthorn family, when they flower. Well, here's the old fruits. You can see they uh, violently dehiss. You got three carpels in there. They violently dehiss. They pop their seeds out. And then, uh, you know, the flowers are an important source of nectar for pollinators when they're going off. Okay. But this plant and this plant are in the same genus. It's pretty odd, huh? Then, of course, you got your Arctostaphylos patula with those uh, inflorescences that haven't, uh, those will be beautiful pink pendant inflorescences. Beautiful pink flowers, little urn-shaped flowers on there when they do go off. But, you know, the ones at about 3,000 feet are already blooming. These will be blooming in about, I don't know, two or three weeks. We are at about 4,500 feet up here. Okay, up close and personal with microstroboli. You could see, they're, look, they're just blowing loads all around town. Look at it. Anemophilus wind pollinated, of course, like all conifers. There's not one single conifer that's, uh, that's uh, you know, produces nectar. I mean, you got the cycads, of course, which are not, uh, you know, they're not in Cupressaceae, they're not in Podocarpaceae, they're not in Ericariaceae, they're not in Pinaceae, they're not in Taxaceae, they're not in any of the, what we think of as con coniferous trees, family. Cycads are in their own little... Uh, their own little clay, and some of them actually get beetles to pollinate them, but, uh, you know, all the, all the tree conifers all release pollen like that from those micro strips. Let's look up close at some of those. I mean, you can see they got uh, they got those little imbricate scales. Well, I wouldn't say imbricate. I'd say valvate. They kind of come together at the seams, and they just dump the pollen out. They dehiss and dump the pollen out. I really would love to get a microscope I don't have one in a car with me. I got one at home. And just look at some of that pollen under a slide. See, there you go. Up close and personal with microstroboli. Okay, maybe more up close and personal than you want to be. Maybe you feel lewd. Okay, maybe you're like me. You got some residual Catholic guilt. Okay, it could be a number of reasons why you may not want to be seeing what you're seeing. Now, why you don't want to be exposed to it. Why you don't want to see it. Why, you don't want your kids to see footage like this. Look at that. Look, dozens upon dozens of Baker Cypress dongs. Okay, all just releasing the pollen. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, we'll stop that now. That's enough. So you can see the old burls 
of Arctostaphylos patula, which of course are important in a fire, which Arctostaphylos patula, the manzanita, is adapted to fire as well. Everything burns, then they come back from the burrow. I don't know how the fuck I'm gonna get through here. You know, it's really walking slow. It's walking slow and just kind of looking for where you can get in, okay? You can see, I mean, right here, they're not growing, they're not growing that tall. They're not doing, they don't seem that lush. They don't got that nice, uh, ah, fuck, I'm getting stabbed by a manzanita, right? And look at Jack, he's so, he's so content in the elfin forest. I probably breathed in so much cypress pollen. You can see what they're not getting. They don't have a, you know, a nice shape to them because this is basically just a huge mound of lava rock. You know, it looks like there's soil here, and there is. There's a few inches, but you dig down a few inches and it's just bare rock. There's no, uh, there's not, there's not enough nutrients here for them. There's not enough moisture for them to get much form to them. So you get this kind of thick, scraggly elfin forest, but it's good because the white fur can't really encroach. How's white fur going to grow on this stuff? White fur needs a rich topsoil, needs all that nice ectomycorrhizae. Members of the uh, cypress family, though, the redwood family, the juniper family, don't associate with ectomycorrhizae. They associate with the glomeromycota and arbuscular mycorrhizae. Remember that. When you're looking at mycorrhizae, you got arbuscular and you got ecto, okay? And then you got ericoid mycorrhizae, which are a whole different thing. And you get, you know, for the blueberry family, they got their own kind of weird thing going on with some of the Ascomyces fungi. Look at this. This is a healthy goddamn cypress. And it's probably, I would say 50 years old, maybe 50. So this population right here, because the white fur can't encroach on it, acts as the mother population that ends up seeding the forest over there. So that forest is gonna burn at some point. It's unavoidable. And when it does, thank God, some of the seeds from this will end up over there they just fall right out of the cones, and you'll get more of those big trees when everything gets leveled, and you get cypresses that germinate and then just grow in regular forest. But this is the forest that nothing else, the pines, the cypre, the white firs can encroach on. That's why you see you got a nice, healthy monoculture of uh, Baker cypress. And it's just covered in, I don't know why the pines don't do this too, but the cypresses really act as a little petri dish for so many different kinds of lichen. Look at it. You got the Usnias on there. Is that a Cladonia? I don't know what this is. That's not a Cladonia. It's a Ramelina, I think. Uh, I always forget the name of the wolf lichen. It's just such a rich, look at that. And the air's got to be so clean for that lichen to be growing. Look at these cones. These are the cones. And we'll, uh, we'll take one down. These things smell incredible. Most conifers, they're what would be their fruits. It's not really a fruit because it's not a seed enclosed in an ovary. They're still a naked seed. Most conifers take 18 months. Well, some pines don't, but most members of the redwood family take 18 months to uh, for the, for the uh, mega stroboli to mature. And then inside this cone, there's about, I don't know, 40 seeds. Let's crack it open. Oh, that aroma is so pleasant. I wish you could smell what I'm smelling right now. It's like, uh, I don't know how to describe it. You know, but if some of those neo hippies could find a way to market that, you know, into like a soap or something and sell it in their little Etsy stores, they could get some, they could get a pretty penny for that. Anyway, there's all the seeds. There were about 15 or 20 that dropped on the ground. So you got about, I don't know, 30 or 40 seeds inside one of those cones. You could see it's still green inside, still connected to the vascu vasculature of that tree. And uh, looks like it just matured. These are probably good. Sometimes if they're still brown, you know, before they got gray on the outside and they got that little, like, a uh, nice uh, little coating of wax, they're not mature yet. But, uh, you know, certainly these, these seem to be, these seem to have matured. They smell incredible. And so now they're just sitting there and they'll stay closed for a decade or two until the fire comes true. And then after about two decades, I think they start to lose viability. But, uh, you know. You got 12 species of native cypress endemic to California, and they all seem to be, you know, they occur in patchy distributions on weird soil, all of them. It's why they're kind of mysterious, relic of a, a former, uh, formerly more wide distribution. But what they're doing seems to be working, you know? What they're doing seems to be working.
Look, Sue, we, we, we got to get Jack a snow cone machine because he really likes the snow. He's a senior dog. He's a geriatric dog. And he really like. we're going to get beef flavor, beef and smoke flavor. And then we're going to put it on a snow. We'll give him a little snow. I bet he would love that. You know what? I'm going to do that. Get a snow cone machine and get some, uh, you know, beef bullion. Mix it with some smoke flavoring. You know, Stubbs is liquid smoke. And then put it on a snow cone form. That's a good idea for a dog. What do you think of that, Jack? God, I just, I love this fucking habitat. I love it open and exposed. Thank God for the volcanoes. Thank God for the thin topsoil. The pines and the firs can't encroach. We got the baker cypress. They're jizzing all over the place, blowing their loads. Got the micro stroboli releasing all the pollen. The mega stroboli, you look so good up there. You look so good. All right. Not quite an ovary though. Not quite an ovary. Okay, still a, still a, a foregone member of uh, plant evolution before the ovary had even evolved, okay? Still gymnosperms, you still got a naked seed, but it don't matter because it's all covered in the lichen. It looks so goddamn good. You got the ramelina, the usnea, the, the fucking wolf lichen, all this stuff going on. None of the lichen on the pines or the firs. Wonder why that is, okay? You got the, the Arctostaphylos patula, still too early for them to be germinating. You got the nice burls, though. Evidence of an adaptation to fire. Louie's having a good time. Jack's eating beef-flavored snow cones. Let's fucking keep moving on. The whole goddamn, it just smells like, it smells like nice cologne. Not used car salesman cologne. No offense to used car salesman. I love you too. But I'm just saying, it smells like some nice cologne. Like not the toxic gross shit. Okay, it smells like some very pleasant French shit. Sourced in botanicals. Some shit I would never wear or have the money to wear, but it's still nice to smell. It's all that damn volatile, all those volatiles coming out of the Baker Cypress. The mysteries of the Baker Cypress known only from 12 places in a goddamn world. Look at that bark, too. You could grow this, too. There's a seed company, Schumacher Seeds, sells seeds of this. They're in Massachusetts. I think maybe a couple other companies, too. Schumacher, I used to order seeds from them. When I was in my early 20s, when I first got into this shit, I was growing stuff. Great little family-run company. They're not paying me to say this. I just like those fucks. Yep, see, what I tell you? Look, there's the rock right there. No topsoil. The topsoil's just an illusion. We're basically on rock. Nowhere near enough soil for uh, firs or pines to get very tall. Just the bare rock exposures. I love the bare rock exposures. Doesn't matter if you're at the high latitudes, the low latitudes. You always get interesting stuff on exposures of bare rock with very little topsoil. Because that's where evolution really plays its part. That's where environmental stresses really dictate some wild shit to evolve. Don't you just love the open and exposed habitats? This is what the sand plains of Florida got to be like. I got to go to the sand plains right there. Okay? Haven't been to Florida in a long time. Got a lot of friends there. Got a lot of friends that came from there. I know all about Florida. Okay? Culturally, it frightens me. Okay? Culturally, I'm scared. I mean, not really. I've uh, seen all kinds of crazy shit from crackheads to the cartel to fucking... I was in the middle of a shootout in their Cabrini Green once. Actually, no, it wasn't Cabrini Green. It was the old housing project son of Damon. They knocked him down. But, uh, you know, Florida scares me. It frightens me. God damn it, I have some amazing habitat there. At least what's left of it. At least what they haven't turned into a fucking Walmart yet. But look at that. Just open and exposed. As human beings, the barren, rocky habitats are where we feel most comfortable. We like the savannas. We don't like the shady forest. I don't like the shady forest. Look at this goddamn. So you could tell these trees are all the same age. Germinated from the same batch of seed after the same fire. Who knows how old? They're probably much older than they look. Because again, there's no there's no soil here. There's a little bit. But you dig down and you get straight to the rock. I'm already touching rock down there. You got about four inches of soil. Maybe six. Goddamn weird. <laughs> weird habitat. And again, these trees can grow like regular conifers. Full, lush, cone shot. I mean, you've seen the ones back in a forest over there. You know, that germinated before that uh, forest grew up. 
back when it was all open and exposed. But, you know, Jesus Christ, here they're just, and that bark is something else, though. And again, these grow in Chicago. They can take cold. They can take cold. When you grow these in humid environments, they get a little bit more bugs. You get a little bit more evidence of things drilling into them. You know, like the one I planted in Chicago, in Crook County at my mass, there's all kinds of boreholes in it. But then they just bleed resin for a while, and it seems to kill the insects, if not just plug them up and block their entrance. But the, and the lichen here is just... <laughs> just oh shit i love weird plants now you can see we're getting off that rock escarpment getting back into the shady forest you got your sugar pines over there five needled pines you got your pondies over there and you got your goddamn white first great tree but weedy is all hell this manzanita is some of the hardest shit to walk through see i just basically had to drop kick all that shit <laughs> it's good though because, you know, I've been out of kickboxing now for about a year. You know, I've been out of the Muay Thai for a year, okay, due to the pandemic. It's easy to get, get stabbed, and it's easy to get lost. It's easy, because you can't see anything. Everything's like a corn maze. Easy to get lost, but here we are coming up on the power line easement, which is a, which is a red, rather unnatural uh, artifact in a baker cypress habitat and uh you know it's kind of uh <laughs> it's kind of rich though because they got a lot of recruitment here i think the i don't know if they planted seed or just or just planted seedlings or what but uh they basically got full sun here so they're doing real well See, look at these trees. Look, these are, like, that guy, someone's got to call the cops on that guy right there. I mean, that's lewd. Just blowing loads all over the place like it's a 42nd Street movie theater in 1979. All those micro stroboli. Okay, little burst of wind. That, that guy's just dumping it all. But you can see how healthy these are. And the only reason they are is because this, look at all the ceilings there, too. is because this is maintained by the power company. Okay, now, absent the power company, fire would be the method of disturbance, which enables the diversity, which enables the baker cypress to grow here, which prevents the white fir, and uh, to a lesser extent, the ponderosa from encroaching. But you could see, they, the power company comes through and they masticate all this. See all the, all the slash? So disturbance can be good. It's, I mean, it's, it, good's a very... I don't like to use that word. Goods like the word nature. It doesn't mean anything. Disturbance can enable a lot of diversity. Just got to be, it's got to be the right times, the right ways. Okay. But yeah, I mean, this is the, this population is basically the health of this population. Since fire suppression is so big now, I mean, what should be going on is, you know, controlled burns. But the absent of that, the power company is the reason that the, this population is doing so well because they come true and they masticate. They'll probably, I don't know, every couple years, three or four years, who knows? Ready? You ready? You ready? Oh, you sick bastard. Oh, God, somebody arrest this guy. Call the cops. He's going to have to register. Look at it. Okay, look at this. Look, because I've been fondling these trees for the last 40 minutes, my hand is just covered in, in the resin, which, again, is in those little white glands on the scales. See that? Maybe not there. That's the foliage is too new, but certainly see that. You see the you see the little white resin dots, and it's part of the reason they go up in flames so well too. You know, if it's dry enough in a landscape, they may not do it. If you you know if you get enough irrigation and whatnot, but pyrophytic plants. Okay, the other thing about cypress is if they're not growing in full sun and they're not that sturdy. Sometimes they just fall down, okay? Uh, like, uh, you know, very old geriatrics. No offense to geriatrics. I've already gotten emails from, I offended some fat people. I love the shit out of fatties. My best friend's 100 pounds overweight. I love him, okay? I love old people. I love everybody, as long as you're not an asshole, okay? I don't want to offend anybody. There's nothing wrong with the ger I'm going to be a geriatric one day if I live that long. Probably won't because of my lifestyle. I tend to take risks, but anyway, so they fall down. Cypresses sometimes fall down 
just like uh, old people. And uh, when they do, you go in there and you just pluck these little cones off and now you got seed. And what you do with those, okay, especially the fire dependent ones, these won't open. Okay, but a way to open them, you can either get a food dehydrator, put them in there, which is just, you know, heat and a fan. That's all food dehydrators are. Anytime you're making like banana chips or persimmons or some shit, you know, some of the permaculturalists know what I'm talking about, right? Or another thing you can do is put them uh, on the dashboard of your car and park it in the sun on a hot day for about an hour and, you know, put these in a pan in a dashboard and boom, they just open up. You shake all the seeds out on a piece of newsprint, then slide them into an envelope. There you go. And it's, uh, I'm going to collect a couple of these because I, I do want to, I grew this, I grew hundreds of these a decade ago. I'm going to grow a little bit more. Okay, so see, Trudeau's Pines is the volcano. Well, it's more just like a little cinder cone. Volcanoes are cinder cone. Well, anyway, that's the, that's the source of the lava. And then here you can see, this is actually how deep that the uh, soil is. That's as far as I could dig. It's just rock right there. Just a pile of volcanic uh, boulders and the plants tell you that. Look how spindly they're growing here as uh, compared to over there where the soil is a little bit deeper. So it just depends where the lava flowed, how it flowed and uh, how old it is. You know, how much, if there's been enough time for a soil to accumulate or what. Look at these spindly bastards. They're the same age as uh, the ones further down that are like three times as tall. Oh my God, look at that bark. Look at that. Kind of a clusterfuck here. And they're on their way out there about to die. They're probably, I don't know, they got to be 100, 120 years old maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they're, maybe they're a lot younger. Yeah, but either way, they're, they're, again, probably much older than you think. Look, they're growing right on a lava rock. But that bark is really something. Look at it. A beautiful color to it. You got pinks, purples, orange. Looks like uh, some of that, uh, you know, you see tweakers in Albuquerque sometimes wearing pink camouflage. You ever see that? I've seen it before. The weird shit over there. Look at that. So, you know, that's basically, I just, I just got this guy to beat off in a bag. So I'm going to take him home. I'm going to put it under a microscope on a little slide. Get some nice money shots. And then uh, upload those shots of pollen to a database. Uh, just for the record. For scientific reference. Look at it, though. Look, you even got some of the, you got some of the dongs in there. You got some of the micro strobolite himself in there. Nice time to be out here. You know, I slept in the back of the truck last night. It was like 34 degrees. And now it's damn near 70, but there's still snow on the ground. How pleasant. Okay, so, you know, you could see all the dongs up there, all the micro stroboli. But you might be asking, now, where's that pollen going to go? Where is it going to land to create these, to create the mega stroboli? And remember, that's nearly two years of maturation right there. This will blow your mind. This is where it's going to go. Look at that. Where are the female cones? Where are the immature female cones where that pollen's going to land? Right there. Those are the mega stroboli. Those, if I can get the cat thing, there you go. Look at that. See how the scales turn a little bit beige? They're not producing as much chlorophyll. They get uh, a little bit more uh, closer together in that imbricate pattern. So that's where the pollen grain is ideally going to land. Ideally from another tree, from another individual. And then, uh, you know, the pollen grain will germinate. Send that little pollen tube down there, pollinate that fucker, and then, uh, you know, 18 months uh, to two years down the line, you get these. How about that? Micro stroboli and mega stroboli. Okay, I got the hand lens on it now. And uh, it's I'm trying to focus here. It's a little hard. But you could see how that is just, it's ready and willing. It's open. That mega strobolus is just uh, waiting for the pollen grains to land down there. You know, and uh, let's see if we can actually... There you go. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. You see that? Yeah, it's actually better without the hand lens. Didn't know we were going to start talking about uh, kind of for reproductive biology today, did you? Good, you get, look at these little tube-like structures in there. So you get the idea. That tiny thing that's barely a millimeter wide, the pollen lands on there, germinates, it slowly begins the process 
of that, uh, well, it's not an ovary, remember, because they're not angiosperms, they're gymnosperms, slowly begins the process of that megastrobolus and all, of, all the separate little uh, seeds inside slowly uh, slowly maturing into one of those uh, fire-dependent cones. Look at that thing. And just for scale, we'll throw the finger in there. Let me see. Uh, oh, wait, there we are. You could see how tiny that goddamn thing is. There's my nasty-ass resin-covered finger right there. And there's the megastrobolus, a Hesperociparus bakeri. Anyway, so that's the way uh, things went on during the Jurassic, for the majority of the Earth's history, really, before the evolution of nectar. How about that? Look, we've been here so long, Jack just gave up. He's just sleeping. He's so tolerant of me. I don't deserve him. So see, coming out here, oh, you know what? I don't know, maybe it's not a power line. This might be the gas. But see, they put these, uh, they got to keep the land clear. Look at that. They got to keep the land clear. Oh, that thing is just, that's obscene right there. Now, look at all those micro stroboli. They got to keep the land clear so these aren't going to get shaded out. Okay, works for the power company or the, the pipeline company, whatever the shit. It works for the cypresses. Okay, moving forward in the Anthropocene, it's a little message of hope. Okay, find ways to make it work. Okay, hard to do in this uh, shitty and increasingly polarized political climate and social and cultural climate of the uh, United States, but you find a way to make it work. Anyway, there we go. So that's Baker Cypress, one of my favorite trees, tree that got me started in everything I studied today, biogeography, evolution. Why the patchy distribution? Why do they only occur in 12 small populations on strange substrates? You know, how do they interact with the rest of the ecology? You got the fire ecology as well. Okay, how does the you know, competition affect them? So many goddamn questions to be answered, so many things to study, and this is just one model here on planet Earth. Okay, you go to Australia, you go to Western Australia, you got your own uh, interesting and mysterious examples. Of this. You go to Chile, you got the same thing. Madagascar, you get the same thing. South Africa, you got the same thing. Himalayas got the same thing. There's so much goddamn shit to study out there. Jack's gagging, I think it's that beef-flavored snow cone. He's puking, I want to eat the grass. So many things to study. So what are you doing? You're fucking around, huh? Get out, study this stuff before it's all gone. And put it out there and share it with others. That's all I got for you tonight. Have a good rest of your day. Have a good rest of your morning. Wash your ass. Try not to be a prick. Go fuck yourself. Bye.